Hey guys, Group Blind Wave here at E3. We just finished up with a Outer Worlds demonstration by Obsidian and uh, got, a, got a little look at the gameplay elements of it, some story elements, dialogue, all that kind of stuff. Calvin, it, it has kind of a outer space fallout feel is what was kind of what I felt with it. Uh, what did you think being someone who has played Fallout, enjoys Fallout and that kind of stuff? Um, definitely felt Fallout to me, mixed with a little bit of like Borderlands, kind of like that, that kind of sickly humor. Like it's supposed to be serious, but you find the, the dark humor and things. I really liked it. Definitely liked the RPG and the, uh, the conversation directions that you can go with it based on your skills and stuff. I've always enjoyed that. Um, yeah, it looks really interesting. I'm excited for it. It's it looks like a very uh, unique world. As we know, Obsidian uh, did make KOTOR 2, you know, the sequel to one of our favorite games, KOTOR. Uh, Shane, I know you enjoy Star Wars and KOTOR. What did you think of this Obsidian title and especially having companions involved? You know, this game I don't think is reinventing the wheel on anything. Uh, and I don't know if it's trying to, but we saw a short demo. I think the world is awesome. So to me, the story in the world is like the main reason why I do these kind of games. I mean, when it came to, uh, we, we saw a demo where you can kind of aim at different body parts. We've seen that before. The conversation of, uh, you know, how you build your character uh, towards lights, not light side or dark side, but good or bad. Some of the ways, some, some of the ways that you can have a conversation. We've seen that before. What I thought it was doing was taking some of the best parts of some games I've seen and making this great game with its own unique world. Um, there was some funny stuff, uh, like you can actually make your character so intellectually bad that it opens up funny conversation. So the, some, the dumb conversations. Yeah, it's literally dumb conversations, what he said. But it was funny, uh, and like the dark humor I saw that was there, I thought the world was colorful, really fleshed out. Uh, I'm pretty interested in it, yeah. Now, one thing that a lot of RPG games usually have, especially tabletop, is skill checks. But one thing I really like this one is that companions also can contribute to that. What did you think of that, Rick? Yeah, they didn't show us the skill tree or anything like that, but it seems like it has a huge effect on gameplay. So you can put skills in what they call the like tactical view, basically where you freeze the world around, can make decisions before you actually start combat. So if you're not comfortable with a first person shooter, you can spec in that. Uh, there's also leadership skill where you can unlock new abilities for your companions, stuff like that. And like you said, I think it's a really cool idea that your companions can help in your skill checks. Like that makes sense, you know, if you have a really burly, intimidating guy with you, your intimidation checks should be higher. So I think all those ideas are really cool. And the other thing that I think is really unique to this one is the, Rick mentioned it, the time dilation uh, Tactical time dilation is what it's called. Uh, it's, it's a matter of being able to slow down time and kind of like take aim, kind of look at your environments, decide what you want to do. Um, and as Rick said, you can kind of buff that more with your, uh, your talent tree. And as you do that, you'll be able to spend more time in it, less time in it. Uh, as you saw in the trailer, there's a moment when uh, some guy blows up something behind him and then the guy flies in the air and then he slows it down so he can take aim at that guy and then when you're taking aim you can choose uh, a maim shot a cripple shot a weakened shot and besides just a normal headshot to execute somebody you can also blind somebody yeah. so there's a lot of options whenever you're actually fighting and attacking somebody so a lot of cool things with that uh shane do you have anything else you wanted to say too was that hibernation sickness is that what he said it was he did say that the time yeah. dilation thing is part of hibernation sickness yeah. so sure it's brain damage but it's a positive brain damage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, you know, just because sometimes your character will just be like this highly skilled warrior or he'll, like a fucking haze, you'll inject something into you. You know what I mean? So they gave a pretty cool reason for that. Yeah. And I, yeah, Rick, you kind of asked Rick the question that I was wondering as well. So, but you love, 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 love tabletop RPGs. So when you see that video games that kind of adopted this, this system, you know, but a lot of that goes on behind the scenes, like the rolling, you know, skill checks, all that stuff. How do you feel about that? Personally, I think it's great. Like, all RPGs in some way take their origins from tabletop. Um, you know, the fact that the randomness is really only in the damage for these kind of games, where you have like a range that your weapons will do. I thought it was interesting that the engineering skill, you can change the type of damage a weapon has. So, like, one of the frustrating things in Borderlands for me was I'd get this weapon that I loved, but it would have a damage type that wasn't useful for me in a particular situation. So I think it's a really cool idea to have in 
like be able to spec in engineering and be able to change those sort of things. Uh, you can spec into engineering and buff weapons, armor, things like that, so that maybe you're not the most skilled fighter, but your weapons kind of compensate for that. You can also buff into like a leadership role where your companions can kind of compensate for uh, your lack of abilities and stuff, just like skill checks for lying and whatever else. Um, and it all will open up different types of dialogue options and stuff that you can have as well. Um, the other thing that I thought was better for this was that Watching the trailer, um, the environments and everything I thought looked really good. I thought the people kind of looked a little lacking. The demo, at least what we saw with this one, I thought the people were better than what we saw in the trailer um, for some of the faces and stuff like that. Um, but besides that, no, I, I like uh, a lot of the game mechanics it has, and I'm really looking forward to this. Comes out October 25th. Um, you guys have five days for my birthday. It's crazy. Oh, oh. Any other thoughts that you guys have on Obsidian's game, The Outer Worlds? Definitely feels like a, a better, more sleeked out like Fallout game. Uh, they mentioned um, like this one particular world, which was an interesting world in that like they were trying to terraform it and it made all the monsters huge. But I wonder how many worlds there are and how expansive the game really is. True. We saw some spaceships and stuff, but from what we saw here, like this was like one planet that we were on. So how big is this world and what do they have in store for other planets and building this galaxy and what we get to see? So um, we're not really sh too sure on that one at this moment. I agree with Rick. Uh, I'm really interested in the world. Uh, I love KOTOR too. I haven't played a lot of other of, of Obsidian's games. I'm excited that they can take their skills they did with KOTOR 2, create their own world, see what they can do with that. Yeah. So, excited for a new IP by Obsidian. We'll have to keep our eyes on it. We only have until October till it comes out. So, make sure you guys stay tuned here at Blind Wave, where we will also be playing more games on twitch.tv slash Blind Wave. Maybe we'll play some Obsidian games and some other stuff. Also, make sure you guys stay tuned for more E3 content right here at Blind Wave.